Alright. Hello, it's me again. So this is about my traveling years. I am uh, 30, going on 31. It's the springtime. I am uh, visiting my sister and my brother-in-law. Actually, they're, they're not married yet at this time. They get married when I'm 32. But mom and dad want me to go down to Czechoslovakia. That's where he's from. At the time it was Czechoslovakia and then it broke up and became Czech and Slovakia. And my uh, brother-in-law, which is married to my sister, has his father that's from there. And uh, my mom and dad are there too as well. And I'm supposed to meet uh, my brother-in-law's father. So, I'm trying not to use my psychic ability and stuff like that while I'm there, but I have two angels beside me. And they're like, you have to go to this bar. And it's from, it's in Prague. And uh, Prague just went through a very political change. They went from communist to democratic, which is a big thing. And there was a small revolution. And uh, uh, my brother-in-law's father was involved with it. He's a bit of a hero. So anyway, uh, we're staying at uh, their place and uh, I get a message to go to this bar. So I go to this bar. Now, at the time, uh, it was about maybe three years after the revolution that we got there, or four, don't quote me on it, but it still had an adjustment change happening. Like they used to use, I think it was called the crown for money, now it's the euro. But, um, it was like 40 to 1. So every Canadian dollar was $40 of their dollar. Which is a, a ridiculous amount of money if you think about it. Even 10 bucks would be $400, right? So, and I'm not doing bad. I, I have wealth. I have money, you know. So I'm supposed to go to this bar. And I go to this bar, and the angels are like, the, their English is not no good. There's hardly anybody can speak English. There's only a few waitresses that can. And they're even broken up English. So you're going to have to deal with that. So anyway, I start talking to the waitresses, and uh, I do my little routine that I usually do. I call it a magic trick. Uh, but in, in the movies and stuff like that, they show you all these things that uh, prophets and special people say. It's just a magic trick. Like in one of my favorite movies, uh, uh, an actor is splitting the soup. And then God goes to him and goes, that's just a parlor trick. He goes, but it is magic. He goes, yeah, but it's, a, it's, a, it's just a trick to, for people. So anyway, that's the kind of thing I can, I can do a little bit about. So I'm doing my thing. But that wasn't the thing that got everybody. It was the wealth. First of all, I'm pulling out American dollars and Canadian dollars, and I exchanged, I have about 50,000 in their money, which is only like a hundred bucks, you know? And so I'm like, wow. And I'm spending money like crazy, tipping like crazy. And then the angels come, you, you gotta take it easy. You're upsetting these people in here. And that wasn't my intent. My intent was to show them that in a democratic society, you can pretty well, you know, make your own decisions of what you want to do in your life. You're not bound to be what other people tell you you're supposed to be. But that wasn't the situation I was getting across to everybody. So I tried to talk to the waitresses and they're like, uh, yeah, they're upset. They're not going to let you leave even. And I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? And so the angel's like, you're going to have to do that thing you did with the animals, like the dogs when I was going down the street or at the beach when I was at the beach and I could put the animals to sleep. It's a crazy amount of energy. And, and in it, I don't know what will happen to a human being. I know a dog is less intelligent than us, believe it or not. And, you know, they'll, they'll rebound. But a human being, when you play with their minds, it's a whole different ballgame. And they didn't want to hurt anybody. 
So I focused and focused, but it was hard. It was super hard. And this is where I figured out that in self-defense, you ain't going to be able to beat up a mob anyway. And you don't want to hurt people because I started to think about the repercussions of hurting people. So I used all my energy, everything I had. And the angels can't help me in this certain situation. Be I don't, you, you think, okay, how come the angels can't do something? Because they can't alter the positions of other people's lives. They cannot, they cannot affect their lives directly. But my life, I can affect it to stop whatever is going to happen bad to me. Now, push comes to shove, the angels will save me and not let anything bad happen. But this would probably turn into a brawl eventually, because the waitresses are going to back me up, and they're two girls. And you know, the odd person in there that understands Democrat to uh, the situation that they're involved with in the politics, which I hate politics, will probably defend me. And a lot of people are going to get hurt. So I did it, and I pushed everything I could. And I, I, I got him to get all docile. And got to remember, we're in Prague. There's probably 150, 200 people in this bar. And I did everything I could to put it down. But they still had a little bit of energy left. And I'm like, ah, I'm just going to let them beat me. So my brother-in-law's father comes into the bar. And he's a hero, right? And they saw him coming to me, and then everybody backed down. Because they they liked what he did for his country. It was, it was kind of teary-eyed for me to see them all, you know, give this guy his dues for what he did for his country to make it democratic. And I think it was a good thing. Anyway, I walked out of there and had a lot more respect for this man. And that's my story. I think I was in there for the whole bar to show them that there's something out there other than just oppression. Anyway, that's about it. That's a little bit longer than I anticipated.